90 years. That is probably the most important number at this moment in the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Dr. Anton and we're in September of 2021. This video is about a very pertinent question that many of my patients are asking me. After having had SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19, am I immune? How immune am I? For how long am I immune? Is it only three months um, like some articles suggest? And without letting the cat out of the bag, people who have had uh, COVID-19 are really going to enjoy this video. Let's start with another question. How many people in South Africa have had COVID-19? Now, I don't think anybody can be 100% sure, but there are some people making estimates. One of them is Emil Stipp, the chief actuary of Discovery Insurance, who says we are probably somewhere between 70 to 80% of our nation who have had COVID-19. Another opinion on this issue is coming from the South African National Blood Service. Now, they have been testing for antibodies from the natural infection at all their blood donation sites. And what they found is the following. Their testing shows high antibody levels in provinces like the Eastern Cape already in January of this year. Places like Gauteng were at 43.7%, but this was in May and the national weighted average was 47.4%, ending in May of 2021, taking into account that the third wave was only starting in May of this year. So we can agree from discoveries, statistics from the South African National Blood Service that there is a large number of people in South Africa who have had SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. But the question remains, are you immune to further infection? Are you going to get it again? And for how long is your immunity going to last? Which brings me back to why I opened this video with the statement 90 years is an important number. Now this takes us back to 1918 to the terrible Spanish flu pandemic. And what is important about this is that there's a group of researchers that tracked down people who had survived the 1918 Spanish flu. And they did some blood tests on these individuals. And what they found was absolutely astounding. All these people had circulating white blood cells or B cells that still showed activity to the Spanish flu 90 years later. But the plot thickens when we look at a close cousin of SARS-CoV-2 called SARS-CoV-1 or SARS, which happened in 2002 to 2004. Once again, researchers tracked down people that had survived that infection and what they found was memory T and B cells still circulating in the blood of these individuals. The author specifically noted that these T cells displayed robust reactivity to the N protein of SARS-CoV-1, despite the fact that it was 17 years after the infection. So the next obvious question then is, do the same rules that it applied to the Spanish flu that apply to SARS-CoV-1, do they apply to SARS-CoV-2? If you have the infection, will you produce these memory T and B cells that will supply you with the long-term immunity? And the answer to that is that it is highly likely that people who have had SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 infection will develop the long-term memory T and B cells. I'm basing my statement on multiple studies that are being released that was done on survivors of SARS-CoV-2 that shows the presence of memory T and B cells. In one particular study, survivors of SARS-CoV-2 were asked to volunteer for bone marrow testing. And why they did that was they were looking for the long life antibody secreting memory plasma cells that we know is the best available predictor of long-lasting immunity, and they did find them in survivors of SARS-CoV-2. Why are these plasma B cells so important? Because they are described as cells that don't have a half-life or they don't have an expiry date. Your body will keep on producing them for an unlimited period of time. So then why all this confusion about 
your immunity and how long your immunity is going to last. And I think part of the confusion comes in with misunderstanding antibodies versus memory T and B cells. As you can see in this graph, antibodies will rise after an infection and they have to wane in time. Now that period is anywhere from four months to 12 months. Some research says it could be 14 months. But the, the point is antibodies have to go down because it's abnormal for the human body to have high antibodies all the time. People who have autoimmune disorders will tell you that that is a problem because those antibodies eventually start attacking the body if they just stay high all the time. The point is, as you can see in this graph, the cells that will remain there for long are the memory T and B cells. So this brings me to another question that people have, and that is, can I get COVID again even though I've had it? Because there are constantly new variants, and uh, I'm worried that I'm going to get one of the new variants. So the answer to this from the research is it's highly unlikely that you will get an infection again. And if you should get infected again and you are symptomatic, there's a high likelihood that your symptoms will not be severe. So why are researchers finding that people are not becoming reinfected so easily? It's because of another type of white blood cell. We've now spoken about um, the memory B and T cells, but here is another amazing white blood cell called a cross-reactive T cell. And we actually know from the early parts of the pandemic that people who were exposed to normal coronavirus colds in the years running up to the COVID-19 pandemic had cross-reactive T cells that could identify SARS-CoV-2 even though these people have never been exposed to SARS-CoV-2 previously purely because of the presence of the cross-reactive T cells. But we also now have reliable science that people who have had SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 have cross-reactive T cells that can identify variants. But it gets even more interesting. Remember the people that were tested to be immune 17 years after the SARS-CoV-1 infection? In this group of people, the researchers found cross-reactive T cells that identified parts of the N protein for SARS-CoV-2. I have to I would just make a note about people who had asymptomatic infection. Now there are two groups of people that fall under the asymptomatic banner. The first group are people who maybe live in a house where everyone had symptomatic COVID-19 and they never had symptoms. Now it's difficult to predict if your body was exposed enough so that you develop the immune reaction and you may want to consider doing an antibody test um, if your infection or your family's infection was more than a year ago you may want to consider t-cell testing to determine if you are immune then there's a second group and this is a group of people that were tested with a pcr nasal swab while they were asymptomatic or you're a healthy person that was tested with a nasal swab. Now we do know that the PCR did produce some false positives and you may want to do the same thing, go through the same process of testing antibodies and possibly T cells as well. So just to reiterate my answer to the question, can I get it again? The answer clearly is it's highly unlikely and if you should get it again, then your disease is probably going to be mild as your body updates its software on the N protein and the identification of variants. For more detailed reading on COVID-19 and the body's immune response to the virus, I can highly recommend these two articles written by Mark Girardot that explains exactly how the body responds to the SARS-CoV-2 virus and also the history of the Spanish flu and SARS-CoV-1. For more uncensored information, you can join me on my Telegram group it's on this platform that I regularly update my COVID-19 outpatient protocol as well. I trust you enjoyed this video. I'm Dr. Anton. Have a lovely day.